good day to you, partner. I'm Dean, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken cave. Hey guys, Sweet Solo here, aka the Skeleton King. So we have a really cool video today. Um, oh, by the way, I don't know why I chose the long intro. I just did it on accident. But honestly, Ren Ren did so much work. I think it's worth having the full Skeleton King intro for this video. We're doing a completely naked necromancer now. This is going to be on Pluggy, although it's with simulated ping. It looks like maybe not. And uh, he's basically unkillable, as you can see. Um, I don't think that's affecting the clear speed too much. Maybe his clay golems survive a little bit more than they should. Um, these maps are all going to be the same royal crypt, um, white, and then he's going to go straight to the boss and in the video when he kills the boss. All the builds are pretty similar. Uh, there is going to be some differences when it comes to the mages and revives, just based on the way those skill trees work. Uh, but basically we're going to see a uh, 20-point clay golem, with you know 20 gm 20 bg and then 20 amp and then blood golems is going to be exactly the same fire golems is going to be another thing where it's you know 20 points in the fire golem 20 in the ig but then 20 lr skeletal mages there's going to be a few leftover points because he's only going to max out mages and mastery and then for revives the same thing where he's only going to max out um desecrate and revive uh, he is going to do amp on that and run frenzy lords so this is plus 10 skills and Plus 10 skills is so easy to get, and it all it requires is just a little bit of patience for shopping a wand. And there really isn't a reason for anyone playing this game not to just open a PvP portal right next to Akara and shop a wand, okay? By the way, I don't know if you're paying attention, but that was a possessed champion mob, and they unfortunately cannot be cursed, so don't waste your time trying. So, how good is this? This just goes to show you that all of the summon skills at plus 10 actually have pretty similar clear speeds in a map for this game. Now, I've always said there's almost no reason to do vanilla content. I no longer think that is the case. But as a summoner, you really should try to get into mapping as quickly as possible because I don't think mapping actually affects your clear speed as much as it does for some builds. Um, especially because Necromancers really aren't that good at farming Arcane Sanctuary, at least Summoners. Uh, definitely they can do cows, and if you followed my content, you'll know that cows is actually a great place to farm early on. One of the other issues with, I guess, this metric is, is we do have to run key items for the builds. So for the Blood Golem variant, we're obviously going to have Edge on our Necromancer. So... I don't know what the clay golem would have. Again, there's no really early budget item that really helps a clay golem necromancer out more than just plus skills. Like, I don't know. I guess you could have edge on that too. But the amount of ATD that this is returning is almost nothing. The clear speed difference from blood golems, though, and clay golems with just edge is actually noticeable. Now, all these are being done in 2x speed. Remember, Blood Golems don't splash. They only have a single target attack. But every time they are struck, they are applying their open wounds damage. And actually, I want to <laughs> let you guys in on a little secret. We've been trying to figure out exactly how the open wound stacks work on Blood Golems. And what it seems to be is, and if anybody out there is playing Blood Golems and wants to use their own eye test to help us out, they don't stack because you should see the open wounds actually um, accelerate from one stack to two stack to three stacks, and it should be quite noticeable considering they can easily do 5,000 open wounds damage. Instead, what we think is going on is, is that let's say you have 1,000 sheet open wound damage. It applies one stack at 1.5x that value, and it never increases or decreases. It's just that. So right away, it does 1.5x damage, but then it doesn't get the times two or times three. Now, I think that's actually a buff, 
maybe not budget, but in game it definitely is because it will make the build basically have a little more punch right off the bat and not have to rely on getting struck twice or even three times to do a high amount of damage. Now, the Blood Golems are going to absolutely obliterate the boss, but I get to talk about something else real quickly, which is actually, even though Blood Golems have open wounds, they are still terrible single target attackers. In fact, the highest single target DPS a Blood Golem Necromancer can do is one Blood Golem and four Clay Golems, if they are running, of course, points in the Clay Golems as one of their synergies. Um, now, I get to talk about something else, about what golem synergies are actually the best, and I guess there's a little bit of personal preference. Um, I don't think iron golem is necessarily a good one early on. Now, the AR values probably shouldn't matter so much, considering I believe Rinrin is running a level 99 necromancer, and actually your character level affects the AR of all of your summons. So probably running clay golem on this fire golem build wouldn't do much. Now, also the fire golems, although they do a pretty nice amount of single target DPS, what you're actually needing to actually clear the map is going to be, of course, their AoE pulse. Now, it's no surprise that fire golem is going to be clearly the slowest build so far. They definitely are something that scale really well with plus skills and not just plus skills, but fire percent mastery, whether that's going to be a fire large charm or fire facets or Ormus robes, anything like that. But again... It's not out of line with what clay golems did, um, and even blood golems. And again, plus 10 skills is so little. If you just shop a plus 6 wand, you get any plus 3 head, which is not a challenge. That's already plus 9. Then you get like a plus 3 circlet, plus 12, right? Plus it's just a plus 2 amulet you craft, that's plus 14. You're already at plus 15. And what I've always said is, is like plus 15 is basically just going to be given to you by the game. That doesn't account for any skillers. It doesn't account for any RNG like an early ring or an early arachnid mesh or anything like that. And then getting plus 20, what? You get a couple of skillers, you get one nice drop, and you're already there. And it's very, very easy to do. Now, I would go fire golems, except for blood golems are new and running edge harmony is actually something I do want to try. I just think the reason why I would go fire golems personally, if you really want to do just a golem build early on, is it is going to scale the best into in-game. And also, if you're running areas that are good for fire, like uh, Maggot Layer and, what is it, Glacial Trail, right? God, I always forget. Or is it Crystalline Passage? I forget. It might be Glacial Trail. But actually, Fire Golems absolutely obliterate it, or even uh, Stony Tomb. And it's clearly the fastest, and it's not even just that, because it's going to be basically the gear you get on the way. You're going to notice the benefits to Fire Golem more than Blood Golem or Clay Golem. Last thing is, on all of these builds, we're not running a Mercenary. A Mercenary would at least increase the clear speed by, what, 25% probably? We're not even talking about any amount of good gear. Just putting very basic stuff. So an Act 3 Merc with, you know, random insight rune word or just a random scepter found along the way just get plus skills plus fcr or of course act one physical merc and just putting a harmony on them i actually think he probably should have ran vigor for all of these builds because i think it would have been appropriate for what your actual clear speed will be like and it definitely would have buffed the golems more than any of the other builds and since mages um, mages are going to be as fast as blood golems, and then revives are actually going to be the fastest, they benefit the least from vigor. And so I think it would have helped the clear times of the golems a little bit. And what's funny is, I think blood golems actually might have been the fastest with this weird test if they had had a vigor aura. But again, that's a very, very small issue. One of the other problems is, just like Blood Golems had the Edge Rune Word, we do have a key item on for the Mage build, which is going to be the Grimm's Burning Dead Scythe. I don't know if this is fair, but then I get to bring up the counterpoint, which is, is that there's like 13 skill points left on the table for the Mage build, because Renato did not put them into Warriors, for instance, and run like 10 CM. He just did a very, very strict build where it's just one summon, one curse, and go. And so I think Grimm's kind of makes up for that. Now, obviously, the power level of Grimm's is very high, but mages actually don't do a lot of damage around plus 10 skills. But by plus 15, they are going to absolutely obliterate everything else in the game, even fire golems, just because of the fact if you're talking about having a Grimm's Burning Dead, <laughs> he founds a Sir Rune. <laughs> it's a good thing he picked it up, too. You never know who might come in and snipe your gear. 
But the mages just, okay, they actually destroy things. Why? Because they're ranged summons. And in fact, they even do pretty good on the boss by themselves. They don't even die that quick. In fact, they're quite tanky. Uh, you're going to notice later on as you run harder and harder content that the mages aren't going to quite survive as well. But early on, you're really not going to have much issues with them dying. In fact, they're basically tankier than warriors. Warriors have more replenished life, but, you know, it, all it takes is being poisoned, and that doesn't matter at all. So finally, we are going to go to the last version of the build. It's going to be Revives plus Desecrate. And by the way, I always tell people avoid Desecrate as a synergy, and I'll say that again. Avoid Desecrate as a synergy unless you don't mind using your respects. Um, it's not that Desecrate isn't ever worth it as a synergy. It's just more that as your gear gets better, it becomes worth relatively less. And then you can put your skill points into Gola Mastery, uh, more curses, etc. And you'll just get more benefit for your skills at that point. But from naked to like plus 20... Desecrate is probably worth more than anything else you could do with your skill points other than not having curses because curses are just that good. <laughs> now, I brought up that the um, vigor isn't as important on mages and frenzy lords, and the reason is just being shown on the screen. The frenzy lords have frenzy, and so they're going to have a lot of faster run lock without it. And so again, although revives are clearly the fastest by a wide margin, um, even if you include the revive time, they're basically still just as fast as mages and blood golems. And I don't think Renato very did a very good job of trying to revive these as quickly as possible. It just goes to show you the absolute ridiculous power of revives budget with the desecrate synergy. And then just think about it this way. When you get plus 10 more skills and you drop desecrate as a synergy, they still are going to be doing just as much damage on the screen right now. Revives are that good. What's the other thing about revives? In case you don't know, they gain every single map modifier from a map if you revive them from your desecrate pool. Now, again, you need to use the revives from desecrate, not just when you kill in the map. Those will not have the map mods, but if you do desecrate and then revive them, they're going to gain things like IAS, Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike, and any source of ED for light damage, magic, fire, etc. And if you put all that together, they become even more powerful, and you can really, really do budget necromancer farming very early on in maps. Anyways, Renato, thank you so much for the work. Um, that's going to be it for the Skeleton King today. GG, guys. Come and play with us, Daddy.